Wonder Woman 1984 is out in theaters and on HBO Max, and we're breaking down all the major Easter eggs and DC Comics references in this video. Did we miss one? Got an opinion on Wonder Woman 1984? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, and a major spoiler warning before we continue. Haven't watched the movie? Turn away. Okay, everyone else here, let's go. Number one, and this is an easy one, but in the middle of the credits we meet Asteria, the Themyscarian who wore Wonder Woman's golden armor. After saving a baby, she turns around and is none other than Linda Carter, the original TV Wonder Woman. However, you might have missed this moment earlier in the movie when we see Carter's distinctive eyes. Only true fans, etc., etc. Fun bonus Easter egg, Gail Gadot is actually wearing outfits very similar to what Carter wore on her TV show, which ran from 1975 to 1979, a little before 1984. Number two, Pedro Pascal's Maxwell Lord is a businessman just like in the comics, but in the books he has mental powers that allow him to control people different than wish powers like in the movie. However, one thing is consistent, the nose bleeds. It's a little moment, but one that comes straight from the books. Number three, the guy who clashes with Max Lord and is his first wish victim is none other than Simon Stagg. Stagg is played by Oliver Cotton and has appeared on numerous TV shows, including The Flash, played by William Sadler. Basically, he's a morally bankrupt businessman, and that's all you really need to know. Number four, Bialia, the fictional Mideast country Max Lord travels to and where Diana and Steve track him down, has a long history in the comics. Black Adam, soon to be played by The Rock, murdered a ton of people there in the comic 52, and more importantly, that's the place the original Blue Beetle found his scarab in the books. We'll ignore the kind of dicey Middle East politics of the movie because, hey, Easter eggs! Number five, what happened to Etta Candy, played by Lucy Davis in the first movie? Well, she's human, so she died, probably. But we briefly see her in a picture in Diana's apartment, which you might have missed. Number 5.5, we get to see Steve and Diana's crew in a quick pick under the headline, The Great War Ends. In Batman v Superman, Bruce Wayne found a different pick, so what's going on here? Maybe not an Easter egg so much as a tee-up for Wonder Woman 1969. Number six, you probably caught this one, but the invisible jet. In the movie, Diana uses her God-given powers to make a stolen jet go radar silent. In the comics, Wonder Woman's invisible jet has been around since January of 1942. This one is a little iffy, but versions of the Dreamstone, the magical MacGuffin Max Lord uses in the movie, have existed in DC Comics for years, most notably used by the Sandman, Morpheus himself. It's a quick little mention and doesn't show up like Ares did in the first flick, but Diana says the Dreamstone was created by the Duke of Deception. He's a Wonder Woman villain also introduced in 1942 and has appeared throughout the comics, usually working for Ares. In Wonder Woman 1984, though, he remains weirdly off-screen. And this one is more of a thematic Easter egg, but a lot of Wonder Woman 2 pulls from Superman 2, just like how Wonder Woman 1 played on Superman 1. Here you get two shout-outs, Diana losing her powers, just like Clark did, and Max Lord going to the Oval Office is very reminiscent of Zod's trip in Superman 2. Number nine, this is a big one, but did you notice that Wonder Woman is in this? It's true. Good Easter egg. Okay, that's it, but thanks for watching. And again, if you got an Easter egg we missed, you know, a non-obvious one like number nine, let us know in the comments. Please remember to like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.